where uh, this week we spent a lot of time on glutes. And the reason that I'm so fond of glutes is because there is an amazingly amount, amazing amount of function that we have in our glutes, and they're not all the same. You would think that, you know, this is just one big fat muscle back here, but that there are different muscles in there that have different functions. So glute maximus is the one that we think about as being this big old muscle back here, and that's the one that gives us our push up, right? So we can push up from a squat, we can push off if we're gonna jump or something, that's our glute max. If we wanna extend the leg behind us, that's glute max. But while glute max is busy doing her job, glute medius has to be working to hold us up. So glute medius is a little more elusive. You'll recognize the people that don't have glute medius because they walk with a swagger, like this, right? So if I walk and every time I step, my hip goes down, that means that there's a weakness or a non-use of the glute medius. If I want to use glute medius, I'll be walking up tall. My, even when I step and walk, there's not a lot of hip excursion either way. Right? Also, teenagers do not have glute medius because they hang around like this all the time. Right? That is the no, absolute non-use of glute medius. Or uh, people who actually have trouble with glute medius are mothers after they've had babies and hip hip hugged the baby the side held the babies all on the same side for a number of years. That actually can create dysfunction and weakness in that glute medius because it's not working in this position. And when you're in this position, you can't really do anything properly. Everything alignment-wise comes out of a line. So glute max works this way. If I want um, to hold it so that I can actually kick backwards, I've got to stay up tall on glute medius on this side. So I'm staying up tall now and now I have room for that leg to move underneath me. So standing on one leg, going back and forth, is what fires up glute medius. And if you're still unsure, you can always poke yourself. It's kind of right here. You'll know if it's on because you'll feel that little indent happen back here when you turn it on. So that's our glute medius. And then the other thing we have back there are our hip rotators. So those are kind of diagonal muscles here, and they help us do this opening hip motion, right? The frogs and the opening hip, mo hip motions that we get. So without any strength in the rotators, we also wouldn't be able to move the leg outward or the hip open. So all that lovely clamshell stuff and the fire hydrant work and stuff like that is all to strengthen that. So packed into there, we have glute medius for stance, and actually glute medius opens the leg to the side. This would be glute medius working on both legs, but this one is the stance, in isometric, this one is in a contracting uh, eccentric, concentric way. Right then, we have um, with the rotators who we could get to if we would rotate the hip open. Right. So, what what do you take away from this? What you want to take away from it is how do you get glute medius on, and why do we care in our daily life? So, glute medius is our glute max is going to work for you um, if you walk uphill you squat, it's gonna work because you have no other choice. Glute medius gets away with um, not working if you're, if you're not aware. So a uh, great way to do that is, I like to go up on my toes, and then I, because when I'm up on my toes, everything's active, and I'm gonna actually try and really lift my bottom, so the crease between my hips and my thighs, I'm gonna try and lift up, and then I'm gonna set my heels down, and not really even set them down all the way, just set them down lightly. Then I'm gonna keep that and just bend one knee out of the way. Let the heel sink, but nothing else. I'm still picking it up and holding there. So in order to strengthen that, I can come up. Good, squeeze both lifting up forward with those hips. Lower the heel down. Good. And keep this leg right where it is and see if you can start to totally unweight the other leg. And work on standing single leg stance here. But right? don't let it go down. Stay up. Right? So that's one of my favorite ways to do that. And so when you're walking, I want you to, that's one way. The other way, when you're walking, you can put your hands on your hips out here. And as you walk and take your step, make sure that there's not this sinking moment after you take your step. You want to stay up tall on the leg as you take weight onto it. So I'm going to stay up tall as I take weight onto my leg. They look a little robotic and silly, almost like a prancing horse, 
right? <laughs> like the daughter walks around like the prancing horse. But that's the idea to try and keep the glute medius on. And then you'll relax into it and you'll be able to walk well without hip swagger. Yes? So your goal for this week is to find glute medius. Try and find it either by tiptoes, going down, staying up tall, picking up the leg, or by walking around, holding your hands on your sides and just see what kind of motion you get. You should have some motion, but not a big runway swagger. All right, so have a great rest of the week and enjoy. Send me questions if you have any about the tidbit. You can um, email us or just send us a message through Synergy or I think even on our, we have a little blog page or something you can send us to us as well. So, all right, I will see you all later.